So if you guys run a home lab, I highly recommend checking out this dashboard called Home Page. So let's check it out. Now, one of the first things that I run when I set up my home lab was some sort of home page. Now, originally I was using Homer, which I have a video on before, but I quickly switched it over to something called Flame. This is what I'm currently on now, where I have links to my services and I have bookmarks to certain things that I go through. And it's a lot easier. And I also have a search bar that goes to my search. Ultimately, this was the page I stared at every single day, anytime that I needed something from my home lab. Now, the main thing that this is missing is statistics. So I can't view any of my statistics going on down here. And that's when I upgraded over to something called homepage. Now this is the main website that you get this off of and you can actually make it look like this. This is actually a pretty clean version of what he's got going on. And you could have Plex, MB, PVE, your NAS, all this information all in your dashboard and it actually gives you uh, statistics on that particular service. Now this is my version of what I have going on right now. And it's not complete, I still have a few things I wanna add on to here, but it, I do have a lot of things I usually use. Now, first off, I have my statistics for my uh, Linux container that I'm running this on. So I have the CPU usage, I have one gig of RAM and I have 701 free, and I have this much storage free out of two terabytes. So yeah, this is a pretty decent amount of information I need. But the date, the time, search, this runs right through DuckDuckGo if I was to search through here. And I have stats for my services. Now, main thing is I have here is Sonar and you connect this directly to your Sonar and it'll tell you like how many series you have, what you wanted, what's queued. Same, same thing with Radar. And then if you have Plex and you have this service, you'll be able to pull more statistics like what active streams they are, what's playing what, who's playing and what time frame they're up to. So this is pretty good information over here. Now, I do really enjoy this calendar which is actually linked up to my sonar. So basically if I highlight this one right over here, it'll tell you that the anime that's coming out that I'm currently watching is on Sunday and this is it and what episode it's up to. And on Friday that's coming out, it's the Misfit of Demon Kings. That's gonna be out soon, but you could see it's not on there on last Friday because it didn't come out last Friday. It's actually on coming out soon. And I like the statistics that I could pull from sonar to pull up into my calendar so I know what I'm what series I'm up to or what's gonna be released. Moving on to my network section, I have my speed test, so I know my internet speed, my ping, everything. I also have my OpenWRT, but I did not set this up yet because it requires a lot of um, access control list that I gotta play around with, so I didn't do that yet. And then underneath that, I have my Deluge. On my right side, I have my NAS, so I know what the CPU usage, how much memory I'm using, and what's the pool storage at. My Proxmox, so I know my VMs, how much memory I have left over, my containers. And then underneath that, I have my Docker setup, which is my portainer. And you can see it's running 24, and then four is stopped, and total of 28. Now underneath all that is all my bookmarks. So say Guacamole, there really is no statistics for this. I mean, I guess I could grab some statistics for it, but it really is just a bookmark. It'll bring me right to what I need. And say like if I needed snippet, I could just go right into my snippet. Same thing like how I used to use Flame, which I would go to my snippet box, and it'll bring me right over here. So yeah, I really enjoy using this one. It is a lot easier to set up what, than I thought to get all these statistics up. So that's why I highly recommend trying to set this up yourself. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up. So first head over to your Proxmox and you can run this as a Docker container. So if you're planning to just run this in Docker, they do have a Docker installation right over here. In my case, I'm just gonna run a LXC. So I'm gonna head over to my mini PVE over here, go into shell. I'm gonna head over to Proxmox scripts and I'll leave a link in the description below and also on the top left to my video of this called the secret sauce video. Now from here, all you have to do is head over to dashboards and we are gonna be using homepage. We're gonna grab that and all you have to do is just copy this, head over to mini PVE, back to the shell and paste this down on the bottom and it'll create the LXE for you. I'm gonna hit yes. And I'm gonna create that. Even though I have one set up, I'm gonna create a second one. And I'm gonna use default settings right over here. And I'll just store this onto my LVM. And the IP address is 117 for this. So I'm gonna head over there soon. All right, while we're waiting for this to install, I'm gonna go through their web page. So here we have their home page. And a lot of this is in configuration. And I gotta tell you, it's so easy. It runs off a YAML file and you just basically go down the list. So there's bookmarks, services, and widgets. Those are the three things you really have to be concerned about. Otherwise, if you wanna customize with CCS and all that stuff, you can over here. But the order that it breaks down is like this. It's basically a dash and then the word you want. In this case, which is the bookmarks that you saw on the bottom of my homepage, there's three groups, which 
breaks into three groups right over here, entertainment, developer, and social. And then underneath there, there's links. And that's how you would actually add more links. And the service, it's the same way. If you want group, two groups, or it'll go down this way. If you want three groups, you could just make three groups like this, and then it'll make three groups. If you want more groups or less groups, you could just keep adding the groups because that's the first indent. Right over here is the groups. And you could just keep going forth. And widgets would be a underneath or inside a service if you want just to pull the statistics. And they have a whole lot of widgets that you could pull from. So say if I go into widgets, this is all the widgets that you could actually pull from. Like they have sonar, TDAR, traffic, tons of stuff. And if you don't see it here, don't be shy about searching for it. Like right over here, I don't find OpenWRT. Like I could keep looking for this and I won't see WR, OpenWRT. But if I search OpenWRT, it's actually here and they have documentations for the widget for OpenWRT. So if you don't see something on the list, do a quick search to see if you're able to find it. Now, my server should be set up by now. There you go. And if I head into this IP address right over here, it should bring me to the new dashboard. And there we have it. It's plain. It's got nothing going on. I didn't have any statistics going in here. But what I can do now is head over to that new VM or the LXC. I'm going to change directory over to OPT. And you see there's a directory called homepage. I'm going to change the directory to homepage. And in here, there should be another folder called config. And this is all your configuration files. You got your custom CSS, your bookmarks, Kubernetes, Dockers. These two you don't have to worry too much about unless you want the connection to it. And then you have service, settings, and widgets. So in my case, how I'm going to break it down to you, the top is the widget file. So this up here with the CPU information and everything is called the widget YAML. This in the middle is the service YAML. And then on the bottom is the bookmark YAML. And then all this other stuff that you have in the background or stuff like that, that's your settings. So if you want a background photo, you have to change a settings.yaml file. There's a few things that I noticed about this is one, if you are using this for particular access, it does ask you to write your password in there, which is something I'm not too comfortable with sometimes, depending on what situation you're in, because you're basically putting your password in plain text. Same thing goes for like, if I say QNAP, same thing, it asked me for username and password. Obviously, you can create a username and password with only read with read only access that will pull this information, but you will still have to put that password in plain text. Now let's set up a quick widget. So let's see, I had speed test tracker on, and all it asks for is the widgets for URL and the type and speed and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is head on to here. I'm gonna go into nano and I'm gonna go into service, and I'll just put it into a first group. And this is my first service. I'll just rename this first service to speed test. And then the URL to it, herf, 192.168.105.93. And I believe this is 3000. Let me go to my homepage and find out. Uh, 8765, 8765. Like that. Description, you don't have to keep this, but it helps speed test now in here i would have to add a widget so i'm going to go dash widget colon and then now i could break that down and do type and it's going to be speed test what is it that's it speed test and then the url url actually i need to tab this in one more time because it breaks down this way from widget and then over here i would type in http and then the same thing, 192.168.105.93.8765. 8765. Control O to write the file so I don't have to exit. And then now the new homepage. Oops, I actually didn't need that dash. There you go. Clean that up. Save. And there you go. Now I have my new little widget. Now, if I only wanted specific things and I only want to download and upload, I could head back into the speed tracker and says allow fields, download, upload, and ping. I would go into here and in widgets, I would just do fields and I would do down, download, comma, and then upload and then close that. Save that control O. And then now I'll just do download and upload. Again, every service has their own little 
thing of fields. So if you wanted just to know VMs or LXCs, you can just use those allow fields. Same thing with QNAP. If you just want CPU usage and pool usage, you just need to put those to it. If you don't, and these are optional, if you don't, it'll actually just display everything that's there. So in my case, I only want to upload and download, then I only have upload and download right over here. Now, because I want an icon for this now, what I can do is actually go over here and do icon. And if I head into a homepage and head into the configuration, go into settings, actually go into services, scroll down a little bit, and there's this right over here, icons. There's gonna be a couple of links here called dashboard icon and material design icons. You could use either one. So if I go to dashboard icons, I'm gonna open this as a new tab. It's gonna bring me to GitHub. I go into PNG and I could choose any one of these. So if you have like a specific program or your software you're using, say like Quark, you'll actually have the Guacamole PNG in here and you're actually able to use Guacamole PNG. So in my case, if I want to use Guac, um, PNG, and now control O to save that, it would just give me a Guacamole. You see that and how it just pulls from there. Now, because they don't have a speed test icon, what I ended up doing was going into material design icons and then went in here and did internet. And I took this, which is called web. And by going into like home assistant or something like that, you can see MDI colon web. So what I'm going to do in my case is I'm going to do MDI dash web. You basically replace the colon with a dash and I saved it. And then now it's going to have that earth icon like that. And that's how you add your custom icons into those specific services that don't originally have icons for. And then again, you could keep building this for other services like OpenWRT or Dockers or whatever it is. Now, in my case, I did add some special, which I don't have on everything. Since my sonar is actually being ran by my portainer and I have my Docker linked up, which means I configured my Docker YAML, it actually will pull the running state of it. Like if it's running, if it's not running, I could pull different information from this, but for now, I'm just pulling to see if it is running or not. So you see this, the one doesn't have it. It's because I'm not pulling from the Docker. But if this one has it, it's because this one's pulling from the Docker. So you can see a difference. Now, all these services, if they're already on my Docker service and it is connected, I am able to pull detailed information for each service, like what the ping time is, memory information, stuff like that. But again, you could do a lot more than what I'm showing you here. And the way how he has it set up is really pretty where you could do the background and you got the semi-transparent stuff. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I really enjoyed using this webpage. It was super easy to set up after playing around with it for a little. And I got it to pretty much the way I want to, uh, minus a few things that I don't have here, like Nextcloud and stuff that I'll be putting on. But yeah, it works wonderfully and it's pretty quick. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I just want to say thanks for watching.